So uh, today we're going to look at the muscular system. Okay, so we're looking at all the muscles on top of our skeletal system. Okay, which this provides a lot of our, well, all of our movements. So you, if you don't have a muscle, the muscle doesn't contract or relax, we can't actually move our skeleton. So we have to go through. So there are the major muscle groups of the body. Okay, so these are them. The front view, so the deltoids, top of our shoulder. Uh, the pectoral muscles, which are in our chest, biceps, which are in our upper arm, we have our abdominal muscles, which are in our stomach, the quadriceps, which are our quads, which are in our upper thigh. We're looking at the back of the person, okay, the trapezius, which is in the back, as you can see there, the back of the neck, or lower or low upper back, the triceps which are in the back of your arm, so at the back of the bicep. Uh, latimus dorsa, which is in the back. The gluteals, which are your bum. Hamstrings, which are in your back of your leg, so as you can see opposite the quadriceps. Oh, and the gastronemus, which is in your calf. So we'll have to get you the spelling of that one. So that's key that we actually need to understand and need to know the different muscles in the body. Now, I've put on there about the hamstrings and the quadriceps and the biceps and the triceps, because when we come later, they become vitally important answering the exam style questions. Now, what we'll do is we'll go through each one. So the gluteals are in your bum, as we've said. Okay, in the middle uh, of the body, at the back, forming the bottom, uh, pulls the legs back at the hip. So when we get to movement analysis in your essays, as you move your leg back, the gluteals do that movement. Okay, so the hamstrings, hamstrings at the back, top of your leg. Okay, and it, that bends your leg at the knee. So if you think of kicking a football, as you draw that leg back, that's that movement. It is, that's what the hamstring is producing. Okay, the next one is the gastronemus. There you go, back your leg again, you might call it a calf. Okay, and this is the straightening of the foot. So if you think you're standing on your tiptoes and lower yourself down, tiptoes, lower yourself down, that's your gastronemus. Now that's very important when we come to the lever systems. So on the second lever system, we talk about the gastronemus, which helps you understand the second class levers, but we'll discuss that later. So our next one is the trapezius, trapezius, which is in there, as you can see, top of the back. Uh, it holds and rotates the shoulders and also moves the head back side to side. So it generates the movement in your neck. Also, that's quite important as well, because when we come onto the first class lever, that's the muscle which operates the first class lever. OK, latimus dorsi. There we go. Uh, at the back of the body, either side of the chest. Pulls your arms down at the shoulders and back behind your back. Now the triceps, which are in your upper arm, at the back. And that there is when we straighten our arm. The triceps produce the movement when we straighten our arm. So we look at the front of the body now. So you've got the deltoids, which are in shoulder here. Okay. So it's when you raise your arm up, the deltoids are doing that work. The biceps are in your arm here. Uh, and that is when you bend your arm. So when you draw your arm back into you, your biceps are doing the work there. Now I've made more uh, recognition to the biceps and the triceps. And I will with the hamstrings and the quadriceps because once again, they're the ones when what well, come up in exams. We've got a quadriceps here, top of the leg. Now that's when we straighten our legs. So if we think we discussed when the hamstring, when we're kicking the ball, hamstring draws the leg back at the knee and the quadriceps straighten the leg at the knee. So those muscles work in pairs. Same with the arm. When we lengthen our arm, the tricep lengthens the arm. When we bend it back, 
the bicep bends it back. Okay, so it's one key that we understand that these muscles actually work in pairs. So we've also got the pectoral muscles, which are in your chest. Okay, and they can raise your arms up and side to side movement across your chest. The last one, the abdominal muscles, which are in your stomach. Okay, and that gives us that bending of the spine up and down. Okay. So our body uh, is broken down to three classifications of muscles. Now, this is something we remember. This is a question that might be describe the three classification of muscles or might give an example of a cardiac is a muscle. Can you give me another example? So we've got here broken down into the cardiac muscle. The cardiac muscle is your heart. Yeah, so if people get this mixed up, they forget that the heart is actually a muscle. So the cardiac muscle, think of cardiac arrest. If you watch every TV programs, the big rubber heart attack, it is the cardiac muscle is your heart. Now we have involuntary muscles and voluntary. Now involuntary is when you do something without even realizing. So you have some muscles working in your body which you don't realize are working. So you might think, how is that possible? But you think of your digestion system. Your digestion system is a muscle and it is contracting and relaxing in order to digest your food to move it through your body. And you have no control of this at all. So that involuntary muscle is when muscles are working without you even realizing. So that's uh, the involuntary muscles. And one of the main things, if you remember that, is your digestive system. Now the other one are voluntary muscles. Voluntary muscles are muscles that you move you know you are moving you know you are bending your arm you know you are moving your head side to side it was when i lift my arm up here i'm voluntary my bicep i'm telling my bicep to lift my arm up i'm telling my tricep to move my arm down so involuntary we don't know what's happening voluntary we are fully aware and we are getting them to move so we look at our cardiac muscle Okay, now with a cardiac muscle, you may get it confused because we go uh, cardiac muscle. We may get confused because it's also an involuntary muscle. I can't decide my heart's going to stop beating, so it is an involuntary muscle, but it has its own classification of a cardiac muscle. Okay, it continues to work. We will go more into the heart when we actually look at our circulatory system. Okay, but just uh, a little bit of knowledge there. Our heart is a double pump, okay? It continually beats. Its job is to pump the blood around our body to our major muscle groups, okay? Now we have to remember with the heart when we actually, when you're, because your heart is a muscle, the more you use it, the better it gets, okay? So our heart can actually get slightly larger if we put it under strain, if we actually exercise and get it to work. And it becomes more efficient, better at its job, better at pumping the blood around the body. OK, so we have to remember our heart contracts and it relaxes. But remember, it's a cardiac muscle. So involuntary muscles, which I've already talked about. OK, so we've also got here involuntary muscles are our arteries and veins. OK, so involuntary muscles, I talked about our digestive system, but all the examples our arteries, veins, we've got stomach, your intestines. So these are lots of different uh, examples you can give. Now we need you to remember when we talk about this, it's involuntary. We do it without you thinking about it. It just happens. We have no conscious control. Oh, nice. So our voluntary muscles are what we've said is things that we have conscious control of so we talk about that we decide to lift up our arm we decide to put it down it doesn't just happen so voluntary is we control we ask our bicep to move it up we ask our tricep to put it down so we have to remember the three classifications because you get a question which two three marks of named classifications of muscles uh, give me an example of an involuntary muscle Give me examples of voluntary muscles uh, where can cardiac muscle be found so it's also remembering all different types of questions and how the examiners might try and trick you into uh, not fully understanding the question now antagonistic muscles 
Now this is where you can actually see this is the arm. Oh, oh. Then we go back. I'll move it onto here and then we'll talk about it here. Now if you can see here that our arm, we have a bicep, which is here. Okay, and we have the tricep, which is here. Now if you look at the video it's from the right here, which is going up and down, uh, you can see that as he lifts his arm up, the bicep gets bigger. As he moves it down, the tricep gets fatter and bigger. Okay, so all our muscles are antagonistic pairs. Okay, they work together. So as we lift our arm up, the muscle here gets shorter but fatter. So when we tense our arms, show off our muscles, this muscle grows because it's got shorter and it's got fatter. Now our tricep muscle has relaxed. That's let our arm bend. So the tricep muscle here has got a lot thinner, but a lot longer. Now, what happens is when we move that arm down, let's move this on. Ah, oh, here we go. So I'll go back a sec. Now, this muscle, because this one is doing the work, your bicep here is doing the work, okay? It's called the agonist or the prime mover. The one that's doing is the work is the agonist. It's the fairly two terms. So it may be in the exam style question, they can say what muscle uh, is the agonist when your arm moves up? And you need to think, well, what is the agonist? Okay, uh, the muscle which is relaxing, so we can come up here, the muscle which is relaxing and letting the arm move. So the tricep here is letting the arm move and that is the antagonist. Okay, so that's very important that we can say the antagonist let the arm move because it, it flattens. Now, what happens is when we move this arm down the other way, now suddenly my tricep is doing the work and the, they switch. Suddenly, this is the agonist. Suddenly, this is the antagonist because I'm moving it the other way. This has got shorter and fatter. This has got longer and thinner. So depending on which way your arm moves, if you move it up, the bicep becomes shorter and fatter, and that's the agonist or the prime mover. If you're moving the arm down, suddenly your tricep becomes the agonist and the prime mover. Right, so we've also got the origin and the insertion. So we can go on to this. Uh, right, so we've got when a muscle contracts, only one bone moves, leaving the other stationary. The point at which the tendon, so the tendon is what holds muscle to bone, remember, uh, are attached to the bones, are also known as the origin and the insertion. Okay, the origin is where the tendon of the muscle uh, joins the stationary bones. You can see here our arms are moving, but here isn't. That's our stationary bone. So our arms moving up and down. Our stationary bone is here, so our origin is at the stationary bone in your shoulder. Okay. The insertion is where the tendon of the muscle is moving. So here, insertion is here because that is where the movement is taking place. So we need to remember the origin is where the the, uh, the tendon attached to the bone which doesn't move, and we need to remember the insertion where it does move. Okay, so we need to remember two different uh, ways to describe them. So if you look, uh, the radius and ulna are the moving bones between our forearm, and the humerus and scapula, which is here are stationary so that's the origin so it goes through here so look if you can see now it's gone through what i've just talked through that the hopefully i won't go too far uh now if you can see here that the arm's moving the other way so what we've talked about is now you're straightening the arm and now we've got the tricep has become the agonist or the prime mover because that's contracting. And you can see it's got shorter and fatter. The bicep is the antagonist 
and that's the muscle watch relaxing, which is getting longer and thinner. So you can see how the rolls have switched around. Still, there's no movement here, so this is still the origin. The movement is still taking place here, so this is still the insertion, so that doesn't change. And we're just going different lines of bone, so flanges in the fingers, metacarpals in the back of the hand, and carpals in the wrist, and your ulna, and your radius. So it's actually going through the bones, which you should know by now because we have done the bones last PowerPoint. So we have different types of muscle contractions. We have something called an isometric contraction and something called an isotonic contraction. Now I always remember this with the Lucasade drinks, isometric or isotonic Lucasade. Isotonic uh, was the advert, isotonic Lucasade meant movement, it made you move quicker. So first of all is that isometric contraction, okay? If you think of you pushing your hands together like this, your muscles are working very, very hard, but there's actually no movement taking place. If you think of pushing against a wall, the wall's not gonna move and you can push and push, push hard as you can. Your muscles are contracted. They're working really hard, but there's actually no movement at all. So we have to remember an isometric contraction is when you push against a wall or you are push against your hands, when movement does not take place, but your muscles are contracted because they're working hard. So the opposite to that is the isotonic contraction. So with our isotonic contraction, this is just a normal contraction. This is where your muscles move. They contract, they relax, they get longer, they get shorter. Okay, so this is when you lift your arm up at the bicep, lower it down at the tricep, there is actually movement in the muscle. So it's remembering isotonic is movement, isometric is a contraction which stays still. Now we look at muscle speeds. Now your body is made up of different fibres. We have a fast twitch fibre and we have a slow twitch fibre. Now the fast twitch fibre, let's look. So if you think of a fast twitch fibre as uh, the hare in a running race, so a rabbit which is really, really quick in a running race. The slow twitch fibre is the tortoise, something that moves very slowly. So the two fibres are one's very, very quick, very, very powerful. The slow twitch is very, very slow. Now, with our fast twitch fibres, okay? So, it allows us to move very, very quickly. Okay, the contraction is very powerful. So if we're jumping up, you want a fast twitch fibre to jump as high as we can to really push that powerful uh, muscles to work quickly. Uh, also, the word here, anaerobic respiration. We haven't done yet that yet. But with anaerobic respiration, that means your muscles are working without oxygen. Okay, so if you think of, we have anaerobic without oxygen, we have aerobic which is with oxygen so our fast twist muscle fibers are producing energy very very quickly and because it's producing it very very quickly it doesn't allow our muscles to process the oxygen which we're intaking into our lungs so if you think of a hundred meter sprinter they're working for 9.4 seconds yeah as quick as they can okay your body doesn't have that time to work that quick so we're going to flip on to the next one. Uh, and obviously with this, endurance levels are very, very short. Uh, so you doesn't keep, can't keep going for a long time. Okay, and so when you get a, a question in the exam paper, it will say what event uh, or what sporting activity would fast twitch fibers be suited for? And we're looking for the 100 meter sprint. Don't just put football, because in football there's walking. Okay, there's lots of breaks. We're looking for short activities such as 100 meter sprint, which lasts for a short amount of time, but which is done at full speed. So the next one is our slow twitch fibres. Now with our slow twitch fibres, the contractions are a lot weaker and a lot slower, but they can last for long periods of time. And they use 
aerobic respiration. So aerobic respiration is where you can use oxygen. So if we think of what activities last over a long period of time. Now, once again, if you say football, it lasts 90 minutes. Well, in football, you will sprint, you will stop. So suddenly within football, you use a combined of aerobic and anaerobic uh, respiration. Now, with this, we're looking for uh, examples such as the marathon, where you run at a steady pace for a long period of time. So whenever you get this question with a sl uh, slow twitch fibres, we're looking for weak muscle contractions and we're looking for the marathon, which lasts a long period of time. And that's it. Thank you very much.